What's up, you guys? This is Steven, and I want to share a news article that I ran across over the internet. And it is called, or it is entitled, Can You Be a Latino Politician If You Don't Speak Fluent Spanish? Question mark. And I got this article, or, you know, saw this article on NBCnews.com. <clears throat> And it's, the author's name is Susan Gamboa. Gamboa. Sorry. Susan Gamboa. <clears throat> All right. So what I'm going to do is just read through the article and give my thoughts and opinions on this. Uh, but already from the beginning, I think I know which side I'm going to end up on. But here we go. Um, all right. The prospect that he might be running... Or sorry, the prospect that he might be a running mate to Hillary Clinton made Housing and Urban Development Secretary Julian Castro a target over his Spanish-speaking skills, something that many Latino politicians are all too familiar with. All right, so right there. Um, all right, so apparently Julian Castro um, may become... Hillary's running mate, running mate in um, the next upcoming election. And I think that's a good move on Hillary's part. And, you know, hopefully that will be a move that, you know, will benefit Latino Americans. <clears throat> but, you know, some people are targeting this man because he doesn't speak fluent Spanish. You know, however, not every Latin American, you know, Latino slash Hispanic American, you know, however, you know, it's a dozen names I can say, you know, but not every Latin, Latin American person born and raised in the United States speaks fluent Spanish. As well, there are some people who have came over to the United States and have lost their Spanish speaking abilities, abilities, <clears throat> you know, and does that make them less Latino? less Hispanic, you know? <clears throat> I don't think so. Um, but, you know, maybe I'm missing something and maybe it's not my place to say what is and what isn't Latino slash Hispanic, you know? But, there you have it, my opinion. <clears throat> Alright, next. Um, in a story published Thursday, Politico paraphrased in an unnamed source saying Castro's ethnic background, quote-unquote, may not be as effective in appealing to Hispanic voters as some believe. All right, so basically, I guess, if he spoke fluent Spanish or spoke more Spanish or seemed more Hispanic or Latino, then I guess that would appeal to more Hispanic voters, they're saying. Um, you know, but, you know, you're kind of putting a blanket are a blanket statement on the whole Latin American population. And by the way, I do kind of switch between like Latino, Hispanic, Latin American. At the end of the day, in this particular video, it kind of just circles back to the same thing. <clears throat> um, but yeah, um, I don't think that really makes him less Hispanic or less Latino. I mean, you can argue that it does because when you think of Hispanic, you think of Spanish and having to do with Spanish culture and um, the Spanish language is a big part of Spanish culture, et cetera, et cetera. But at the end of the day, him speaking Spanish or not speaking Spanish isn't, it's like it's not going to negate who he is within society, you know? Like, <clears throat> there's some people who are like third generation plus who don't even speak Spanish anymore, but they still considered Hispanic slash Latino. You know, that does not negate their identity. <clears throat> you know, if this was the other way around and Julian Castro was trying to say that he was Caucasian American or white American, because, you know, I don't speak Spanish, you know, I don't speak Spanish fluently, so I'm not um, a Latino or Hispanic. Then people have an issue with that. <clears throat> All right, on to the next. 
Um, so, quote unquote, Tim Kaine speaks Spanish much better than Julian Castro does. The Clinton ally told Political. Kaine is a Virginia Democrat who spent a year working in Honduras with Jesuit, a uh, Jesuit priest. I hope I'm pronouncing that right. <clears throat> Jesuit priest. Priest. Ooh, need some hooked on phonics. All right. Um, let's see. Castro is considered by many to be a potential running mate for Clinton in you know the 2015, well 2016 presidential election. <clears throat> All right. So. Let me speak on Tim Kaine. All right. I don't know much about Tim Kaine, but I did see him speaking Spanish on like a YouTube video or something. So kudos to him for learning Spanish, you know, um, you know, kudos. But at the end of the day, he's not Hispanic. He's not Latino. So does he really have those people's like viewpoints in his mind? Does he really, you know, go hard for lack of a better word? you know, go hard for a Latino and Hispanic Americans just because he picked up Spanish in Honduras by working a year there. I mean, it's a good thing to be able to communicate with that voting block, but at the end of the day, he would still be considered an Anglo-American, you know, an Anglo-American who is Spanish speaking. So, some people may still be, you know, particularly some Hispanic and Latino people may still be a little hesitant, a little suspicious. Like, let me feel you out and see what you're really about because he ain't from the community. You know, he's not from the community. He is from another community. And not to say that he, you know, he could be the a very awesome ally for Hispanic Americans, you know, Latin, Latino Americans. <clears throat> Um, but him speaking Spanish does not mean that he is automatically down for Hispanic and Latino Americans. You know what I'm saying? All right. Next, Castro spokesper well, spokeswoman Becerra Al Contra. Yeah. Said she would not comment on the criticisms, criticism saying Castro is quote unquote laser focused on ending homelessness, expanding responsible home home ownership, tackling the affordable housing crisis, and creating communities of opportunity across the nation. Not on 2016. So basically, he is. You know, he got his mind on other issues because he is like the housing um, and urban development secretary. So he's doing his job. Basically, his mind is on his job, not on 2016. <clears throat> you know. But I kind of do think he's still probably thinking about 2016, at least in the back of his mind. You know, <clears throat> you know, that's a big come up for his career and as well, possibly for um you know, the Latino population. <clears throat> well, not the Latino population per se, but just, you know, Latinos having someone in a high-ranking position to sort of, you know, go to for assistance or help. All right, next. But... <clears throat> But what appeared to be a flippant matter to the Clinton ally is one that can be agonizing and even embarrassing to some Latinos. Something that opens them up to questioning about their Latino identity. That is true. That can be um, an issue. You know, that can be somewhat, you know, hurtful to be questioned in that way about your identity because not everyone is able to grow up in a Spanish-speaking household. Um, not everyone comes from a Spanish-speaking country, then comes to the United States and still are able to retain their Spanish-speaking skills, <clears throat> you know. 
So yeah, that can be an issue, you know, because language and culture go hand in hand and culture, you know, cultural identity is a big part of Latino identity. So yeah. All right, next, former U.S. representative um, or rep, Charles Gonzalez of Texas experienced painful ridicule and embarrassment over his Spanish speaking skills, often at the hands of other Latinos. Dang, that sucks when your own people doing you like that too. <clears throat> because, you know, they should know the situation, you know? And just because he doesn't speak Lat <laughs> Latino, just because he doesn't speak Spanish doesn't mean that he ain't down for the people and he can't advocate for people and help people just because he doesn't speak Spanish, you know? Let's see, next, quote unquote, there were people who tested me all the time when I was in, off was in office just to see if I spoke Spanish, said Gonzalez, whose parents and grandparents spoke Spanish, who, like Castro, is from San Antonio. Hey, I didn't know that Castro was from San Antonio. Okay. <clears throat> so I'm guessing maybe these guys like, I don't know their situation, um, Castro, you know, Julian Castro situation and um, Charles Gonzalez situation as far as their um, lineage and family is, are concerned. But I'm assuming they're probably like Mexican-Americans at this point and their family either like came to the United States or either the border crossed them, you know, like the whole Treaty of Hidalgo situation. <clears throat> Um, so they might have a long history in the United States. Thus, when that happens, sometimes the Spanish speaking language doesn't get transferred over because it loses like each generation loses more Spanish speaking ability for some odd reason. I don't know how, but that happens. <clears throat> All right. So next. The focus of Castro's Spanish speaking skills and the comparison of them to the speaking ability of a white politician reflect a continuing struggle in the country to understand the diversity of the Latino community and what it takes to reach them politically. A struggle found even within the Democratic Party that won the Latino vote by a one or sorry, by a two to one margin in the last election. Gonzalez acknowledged that speaking Spanish is an asset, something to strive for, but he said, or, but said it cannot be something that determines how a person votes. In the end, what matters is the substance of what is being said to the Latino community in English or Spanish, he said. Thank you, you hit the nail, like, you, like, like, target, hit. <laughs> You hit the target perfectly there. <clears throat> because at the end of the day, it's going to be about the policies that this person is about and want to support or not support versus can they speak Spanish. Because at the end of the day, um, everyone who speaks Spanish is not down for you. You know, to keep it real, just like everyone who speaks English is not down for you. You know, the Spanish speaking population is very diverse in the United States. You know, um, just because you speak Spanish does not mean that every single person has the same exact viewpoint on every single thing. You know, Spanish speakers like English speakers have a wide variety of opinions and viewpoints. <clears throat> and it kind of sucks to have, you know, to be just put in a box like that but it's typical you know it's often just very easy to do that all right next our community should be more engaged and involved in the substance Gonzalez said exactly um, kudos to him for putting that out there you know props for me all right Castro was born in the United States and is the son of a US born mother fluent in English and Spanish <clears throat> like a number of Latinos, his family can trace its presence in the United States for several generations. 
Some Latinos had families in the United in the U.S. Southwest when it was still Mexico. Our family were Native Americans. Are who were Native Americans? Are both. Castro's maternal grandmother is from Mexico. <clears throat> so basically, um, he Castro's family might have been one of those families who have just um, when the when the United States acquired a big portion of Mexico, um, his family might have been a part of that portion that was acquired. So it's not like, oh, he's um, crossed the border illegally. You know what I'm saying? <clears throat> All right. Next, here we go. Castro is a Stanford University graduate who served as mayor of San Antonio. Hey, I didn't know that. The, na the nation's seventh largest city with a large, long-established Hispanic population. He understands and speaks some Spanish, but is not fluent. Okay, well, at least do try, you know? At least he try. You know, and he can go acquire some more Spanish-speaking skills by going to, like, um, Mexico or um, Spain or um, Costa Rica. You know, he can just spend some time there. <clears throat> Quote, unquote, those kinds of comments from someone who is trying to get Hillary Clinton elected are not helpful, not productive, and misinformed, said Larry Gonzalez, a Washington, D.C. lobbyist who is Mexican-American, grew up in a bilingual household, but explained his Spanish in school. I'm sorry, but expanded his Spanish in school. And by the way, he is not related to Charlie Gonzalez. <clears throat> they put that in the article, too. You know, Gonzalez is a very, you know, um, popular or very common last name among Hispanic people. You know, like the last name Smith or Johnson for people who have, um, you know, come from the Anglo-American culture. <clears throat> All right, next, a record 33.2 million Hispanics speak English proficiently while they while the share who speak spanish at home is the lowest it's been in 13 years said pew research in a recent report okay next quote unquote while yes spanish is helpful with certain audiences in certain parts of the country it is his story and his family story and their plan to help the latino community there being Hillary as a potential president and him as a potential vice president. That matters, said Gonzalez, who speaks Spanish. <clears throat> and that's true. Um, just him being in that sort of position can kind of be helpful, you know, depending on how he wants to use his power and authority from that position. So whether he speaks Spanish or speaks English or speaks Portuguese or speaks Mandarin, you know, he can still be of service to the Latino community, you know, no matter what language he speaks, as long as, you know, he just has it in his mind and even spirit to help Latino Americans, <clears throat> Latin American folk. All right, um, next. Let's see. The criticism comes even as some are questioning the ability, the ability of Latinos to weave themselves into the fabric of the country and demands are being made for immigrants to be English proficient as a qualification for citizenship. Yeah, that's kind of strange, too, because Latinos are kind of caught in the middle where it's like, hey, you don't want to give up your identity, but also you want to be a part of the country and assimilate at least to an extent because that can help you achieve more success. And then plus there's also just an, an anti, kind of like a, a xenophobic undertone with all of this are in general. <clears throat> Especially when it comes to um, people who speak Spanish, you know, for some reason, I guess because Spanish is possibly seen as a threat to the English language, maybe. Um, but yeah. Um, but next. 
Republican Marco Rubio, the son of Cuban immigrants, can move easily between Spanish and English. Jeb Bush regularly, regularly uses his fluent Spanish. All right, so congratulations to Jeb Bush for educating himself. <clears throat> All right, um, Senator Ted Cruz, a Texas Republican of Cuban descent who lived part of his life in Canada, admits his inability to speak Spanish, which also exposed him to questioning about whether he was truly Hispanic. I'm not sure how these people look, but I think that might have something to do with it because he may look more so, you know, like a white American slash Caucasian American, so, but has like a Hispanic last name. And because of that, people may question him more versus if he were more of a, you know, browner color, you know, quote unquote. <clears throat> if he looked more ethnic, you know, if he did not look so white. That might be a part of it because it's like, okay, hmm, kind of got to give you the third degree a little bit and just see what you about. And I can understand that. And I know some people may have some issues with that because like, hey, why am, am I getting the third degree about this? But I think they're doing that, you know, the Hispanic population, the Latino population, they're doing that because they just want to make sure they're not being used, you know, because people probably have came in and out of the Latino community and have used them for just votes or used them for just labor and not really cared about them and their struggles that they go through. So they're like, hey, I don't want to be used again. Like, our, you know, Latinos don't want to be used yet again. You know what I'm saying? <clears throat> so I think they're coming from it with that perspective. Like, are you really down for Latinos? Do you really advocate for Latinos? Are Latinos, like, are your thoughts about Latinos? How do you feel when you hear some negative news in regards to Latino Americans. Do you feel like you're a part of that? You know? So that's probably where they're coming from. All right. Next. Castro has had to contend with other references to his heritage. The Washington Post last August apologized after it was swiftly criticized for a quote-unquote well- We'll need more fajitas subhead over a col column item about Castro dining with Bill Clinton. <clears throat> All right, so, you know, that was a little tacky of the Washington Post to say we'll need more fajitas. Um, but don't let nobody shame your Mexican-ness, your mexican dad. You know, people always, you know, some folks, you know who they be. <clears throat> I always want to shame ethnic people about their heritage and their culture for some reason, you know? And, you know, put out more fajitas. Like, eh. But yeah, if I was there, I probably want some fajitas too. But still, you know, <clears throat> so don't let them folks shame you about your heritage, about your culture. <clears throat> All right, next. And while Castro might not be fluently are fully fluent in Spanish, it hasn't stopped others from using Spanish when talking to him. While testifying at a House hearing in February, Castro found himself unable to quickly locate um, Representative Steve Pierce of New Mexico, the committee member who was about to ask him questions. He looked around the dice, a uh, dice, D-A-I-S. I've never heard of that. Um, Pierce said, Aki, right here, to get Castro's attention. All right, so you can watch Dora the Explorer and get Aki now. Come on. <clears throat> she said that like every other minute in, on Dora the Explorer. <clears throat> All right, next. Recent waves of Latino immigrants combined with the growth of Spanish language media as well as technology have boosted the language. That's true. Progress has been made since recent decades when Jim Crow laws were applied to Spanish speakers, prohibiting them from speaking the language in school and segregating them into Mexican schools. I did not even know about that. Although I did, um, like I wound up watching um, American Lives. It's like a, a series on PBS and one of the people they were doing a story about um, 
was Jessica Alba. And she had mentioned in Los Angeles or in California, they did have segregated schools, which is weird. I thought segregation was only a part of the South. I didn't know that it was also a part, like it was used in other parts of the country. Um, but yeah, um, I guess, wow, I didn't know that they used segregation and segregated people into Mexican schools and applied Jim Crow laws to, I guess, Mexican Americans. I just thought that Jim Crow laws applied to, um, you know, black people, African American people. <clears throat> but yeah, so yeah, it's cool to learn something new, you know. These are the things you don't really get to learn about in your history class. So there you go. All right, next. But as with previous generations of Latinos and other immigrant groups, English takes over as time passes. That's true. Pew Research Center recently reported that a record 33.2 million Hispanic Hispanics speak English profic proficiently, while the share who speak Spanish at home is the lowest it's been in 13 years. Hmm. All right. So let's see. Next, former San Antonio Mayor Henry Cisnero said, said he does think it's important for a Latino candidate to speak Spanish. He said it's an act of respect to one's heritage and often instills a degree of pride in Latinos watching someone use their heritage language. I can agree with him on that, you know. Um, I don't have the experience of being a, a linguistic minority in the United States. I speak English. You know, I came from an English-speaking background. So if someone's speaking English, I'm not like, wow, you know, or really like, oh, okay, whoa, I didn't expect that. You know, I expect it because that is the norm in the United States to speak English. <clears throat> um, but yeah, I can understand where they're coming from. It's like, wow, okay, I can kind of identify with this person a bit more because hey this person speaks Spanish and I speak Spanish and we're in a country that is not majority Spanish speaking so we probably feel maybe as some sort of a kinship with that perhaps <clears throat> all right next Cisnero spoke only Spanish at home as a young boy until his father a World War II veteran who was bilingual and born in the United States decreed English would be spoken at home so they will would not be at a disadvantage in school. So that was a smart move on his father's part. You know, it probably was a tough move too, but you know, again, Latinos are in that situation where they want to hold on to their heritage, but also be like more, what's the word? They want to be able to, you know, partake in what is America, you know, and have success. <clears throat> Let's see. Next. By high school, he said he had forgotten most of his Spanish and took Latin. Wow. That's, that's something. I didn't think he would lose his Spanish. <coughs> Let's see. He revived his Spanish spe his speaking when he was in Washington, D.C. as a graduate student and taught citizen classes to Latinos. His ability to speak Spanish grew when he was a city council member and did Spanish language interviews and later in his role as President of President of Univision. All right, so um, that's cool. This dude has become president of Univision, which is like the probably the most popular Spanish-speaking television network in the United States. So good job there. All right, quote unquote. All of us can improve. All of us educated in U.S. schools can work it out. Cisnero said. Quote unquote. It's something to work on, and Julian will be just fine in that regard in due course. I agree. I think Julian Castro will be fine ultimately. Um, let's see. And here's the last part of this article. Charlie Gonzalez joked that he has had a single recommendation for people who are truly bilingual or not. Reaching into the language of Chicanos, he said, quote unquote, end each sentence with consapos, which can loosely mean the insult can't come back to you okay all right so it's nice to hear a story about someone kind of losing their ability but also regaining their ability and that's the end of the article like i said so there you have it um 
Sorry to go on for so long. Um, but yeah, I thought it was a very interesting article. And where I stand on the issue, like I said throughout this um, video, is that you can be a Latino politician if you don't speak fluent Spanish. You can. I mean, is Jennifer Lopez any less of a Latino or Puerto Rican? Or Puerto Rican if she doesn't speak Spanish fluently, you're like people like if she had said, "Hey, I don't speak Spanish, so I ain't no Latino." Folks, people would be like, "What?" I know she'll get so much backlash from the Latino community if she says something like that. <clears throat> um, so yeah, just because you do or don't speak Spanish does not mean that you are a Latino or you are down for Latino people. You advocate for Latino people and Latino rights. You know, I mean, it doesn't mean that. So really, the people who speak in Spanish need to be put to put through the ringer too, you know. But you know, I suppose it's just maybe Latinos just practicing some form of power, perhaps. You know, taking control of their identity and being able to say who and who, who and who is not their representative when it comes to politics, which I don't have any issues with, personally. And I think they should do that. <clears throat> but there you have it. Feel free to comment. Feel free to subscribe. Feel free to give me a thumbs up. Your feedback and support are extremely appreciated and extremely valued. Into the next news article analysis, adios and goodbye for now.